okay i'm back at it it's another day we got rained out yesterday um and uh it's kind of been on and off today so i've been kind of trying to clean up the shop and get a good bead on things but what we're going to do right now is uh, i'm going to blow through this little pile of heavy cast lights and uh we got some transformers a couple little transformers here steve broke down some transformers uh yesterday um and then <laughs> check this out got me a little shopping cart for my my jaw that we found out back and then i um i got this chops oh, it's been hours i had this drying kind of cooked them Wow, this is still warm. Um, we're gonna pull this out and weigh it, see what we got, and then round up. You know, we're just trying to clean out the shop as best we can. I'm hoping we can get to that basket again. I'd like to actually process the rest of the electric motors. Then I'm gonna open that door. I'm pretty sure I have some stuff sitting right out back now that the uh you know that the, they've kind of got on everybody about cleaning up out back because they got uh they kicked someone out and they're gonna have new tenants come in uh so we want to kind of make it nice out there it's a lot of micro scrapping out there this is some stuff i'm gonna have to go through this there's a lot of copper in there um Steve threw all of this shit in the kiln. Not all of it should have went in there, but it's just all stuff we've been sweeping off the floor. And uh, I got a whole big bucket of uh, lead. And then there was something around here. Got a big chunk of brass. Look at this. Nice chunk of brass to add to our little micro scrapping brass. <laughs> Um, and I'm sure we'll find some other brass up in this stuff. Um, and then we got some extrusion. I got a big piece right there of extrusion. I got to clean up. These are extrusion, but they're stuck on there. I'm going to uh, try to knock them out. Maybe we might even have to use the jaw to push them out if they're stuck in there. Sometimes they get corroded in there pretty bad and don't want to come out. These ones seem like they're the type. These here... We're probably going to set up a, um, um, what do you call it, a bolt cutter and, and just hit these real quick with the bolt cutter. It's going to be the quickest, efficient uh, way to do it. Otherwise, I'd have to, um, these are pretty much corroded in there. Sometimes you can get on there with an easy out, but these ones, I don't think it's going to happen. Or we could cut them with the cutoff, but I think we're just going to be better off with zipping them right off and uh we'll get some cast on the on the ticket because i was kind of weighing them lights i started to weigh the one load just to see what we get out of it um and those things yeah i can't be paying for that stuff no more uh we that whole trailer right now with all that aluminum that's sitting on there has 557 pounds of sheet aluminum and then there was some extruded on there let me see. We got 150 pounds of extruded so far. So hopefully we can double that extruded um, and add some heavy cast and, and whatever. Then we're gonna move into some copper to build up some, um, you know, bring them numbers up a little bit. We wanna be up in the uh, $2,000 range when we go to Miami. So I'm gonna hit the time lapse clean off this table a little bit and uh get these transformers up on the table start start recovering some copper then uh then we'll get back on that micro scrapping that's going to be an ongoing thing because uh there's a lot of that actually man i was digging around in them other bins i just <laughs> apparently i just keep throwing shit in these bins and they're them bins are pretty freaking heavy either they're full of water or they got a lot of copper in them i don't know but we're gonna find out here in a minute
guys blew through them uh, lights pretty quick and um, we got a couple thousand watt transformers now unfortunately there was only one with double copper all these got one uh, small copper one big aluminum and pretty much the same with some of these I think that one's a double copper um, I do have more transformers over here we'll get to here in a minute but I got to take a break and get some lunch and um, we got some heavy cast finally so that'll add a little bit to the uh, to the weight and then we'll come back in here and uh, just blow through this stuff real quick see what we got and uh, try to get these pallets out of here I moved this stuff in and out of the shop a couple times I want to get back over to that thing there I got some electric motors back in there we're gonna pull them out and then finally gonna pull out that pile of uh, starters back there we either gonna break them down or just sell them off as is I'm tired of looking at them so we'll be back after lunch okay back at it i'm gonna give you a little head cam action i uh i actually put the transformers up on the table there wasn't much you know so basically just me clipping wires i did check them we did have two all aluminums there was another one this is my little iron aluminum bucket um oh and i don't think i showed this to you guys yet i bought this from the the, the scrapper that i got the other dolly uh thing from but check this out this one comes with a handle and then you can actually use this to pry up the um, I used it on an oil drum outside you can pry the drum up slide this underneath this is for the bungs you can take the little one off the big one same thing with these this is for different size things and then you can uh, stick this in here and it's either solid like this or if you bring it up a little bit it'll it'll lean back it actually works really good uh, for 55 gallon drums even though it's like half a thing all right I think I gave the guy 20 bucks for it well worth it um, another thing is I've got some um, staters cooking or some rotors Woo! still getting hot they're not they're not ready They'll probably take another couple hours to cook off all, all, all together. Uh, got a little bit of aluminum. Already got some number two copper in here. Not much. Um, we're going to add to it. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to wear my mask. I got fresh air blowing across. Got that sucking out. We're not going to do that many. I am going to put my muffs on though. It sounds like I'm yelling. Because I am. I can't even hear myself. I do need some safety glasses. Oh, and I finally, I put a speaker up back there. And I got another speaker up here. So when I'm over here, I can listen to some jams. But we're gonna have to run silent. Oh shit. This thing sticks sometime. That little red light's on. That means it's stuck. Um, one time that thing I went away for a couple days I came back and that little red light was on and that coil was super hot alright looks like we're all dialed in we only have one small one we might just crack that with the hammer but let's see how fast we can do these I have no idea what time it is but we'll pretend we do You know, I do have a big clock. It's an analog clock. Someone had suggested I put one up when I'm doing time lapse, and, and I've been I've been meaning to do that. And I'll do that uh, coming up soon. You can actually see how fast these transformers are going. Or you can just watch the clock on the YouTube uh, counter. But. I'm sure we're easily staying within our three a minute. Ah, these gloves are not thick enough for this. They're 
are great because I can kind of feel with these ones. I mean, I hate wearing gloves, but this guy sent these to me. I really do appreciate it. And uh, he sent those bigger ones, those oil rig gloves. I actually really like them. I've been using them a lot. And uh, they work great. They're thick. They'd actually be better for this. than these light gloves. Whoa! We hustle. We can get five a minute. Normally, shit. Um, once you get going, I bent the hell out of this one bag. Once you get going, you actually get like in a super rhythm. A fucking acorn. First time I ever seen that on the press. been outside a couple times actually three different locations where I live I, I, I rented a yard outside once a big space in a, a yard where other people rent it from and two different times I work I work from home in two different locations the last location you've seen the location before that I don't think the neighbors really cares for me. Not that I would uh, do this while they were home, but I was always out there making noise with something. I think even just me firing up my four-wheeler annoyed them. That thing sounds insane. sucks that these things are pretty much on their way out and all the ones I'm coming across now oh this is driving me crazy all the ones I'm coming across now are pretty much 50 50 um, half aluminum half copper and it what really sucks is the bigger portion is the half aluminum so um that really sucks but i can't complain because i'm going on probably going on 14 years i had a good run in the beginning um, when i first started I was really the only one around that bought these or paid any type of decent money for them. They used to be piles this high all the way back every other day. Thousand watt transformers. I wish I would have um, invested my money more wisely. I just, uh, 
I really didn't invest enough. I just spent it. <laughs> I had a good time, and uh, I didn't. I didn't work that much, really. I went. I went from working 50 to 60 hours a week cutting concrete. Uh, um, working pretty much three to four days a week and I, I lived by the beach like literally I was in between the intercoastal and the beach so I would literally when I went to the beach I literally would walk down to the beach with just my shorts no towel no shirt, no shoes. I would bring my dogs. You know, I lived on the beach, man. I'd skateboard down there all the time and just chill. And I'm almost seeing something splatter. Um, yeah, so I had fun, man. Traveled a lot. Enjoyed not working a full-time job. I haven't had a full-time job in 13 years, 14 years. <laughs> I mean, now I have a full-time job because doing this and then YouTube um, and then just the, the price of everything since I started has it's gone so high, man. My two bedroom, two bath apartment I had by the beach was like 1200 bucks. And, uh, oh man, I think I fucked up. That's double aluminum. I'm gonna send that. Um, now it's probably $3,000 for that apartment. But I definitely would have spent more time invested in uh, that stay director if I would have known that I needed that or that that thing actually existed. And uh, I, I'd probably have a better uh, granulator set up. See if I can't crack this. So, so faster. This has uh, got the plastic on it, so I know for a fact this is double copper. Okay. All right, let's see what we got over here. Steve and his little wimpy hammer. I don't think we're going to need a hammer. I just let the machine do its thing. I used to sit there and smack it with the hammer. But if it doesn't go through like that, I don't waste the time. Fortunately, look at that little tiny coil. That sucks, man. That one feels like double copper. Heck yeah. Need an automatic return on this one.
burned up ones really stink. Look at that. That got crispy. Yeah, if you're doing this stuff, you really should have a... I should be wearing a respirator, but I got that fan blowing right there. You crank that up a little bit. Get it more blown across my face. Sorry if you uh, hear the wind blow, but... I gotta breathe some clean air. I know for a fact this one is gonna be a tough one. These plastic ones always are. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that thing kicked in the second gear, but it's a double copper. These plates are doing really good too. Both of these presses are doing a lot better. I welded this up and Steve ground that back. Um, I ground down the other one. And I tried to put a on those over there, I tried to put a, um, a upward rake to it, so it kind of digs into it a little bit. They've been doing really good. Ah. Oh shit. Come on. Try to get this done before the GoPro gets hot and shuts itself off. <clears throat> That's double copper. Say that for last. One copper, one aluminum. This feels the same. Yeah, you don't come across the double coppers too much anymore. I only had one, one big double copper. What a shame. Alright. I had a little aluminum. Bam. Put that. Unplug that. It's plugged in over there. Okay, well that's it for that. Um I'm gonna probably weigh this up, see where we're at. Steve's in the office eating dinner. Okay, I had a bunch of starters over there in the corner. They're kind of buried down in here now. Um, but basically, this is what they consisted of. A uh, outer shell. The rotor. Okay. And then the actual little solenoid here, which actually has a nice little chunk of copper in it. Um, 
but like I didn't want to sit here and try to cut all that out I mean that's just way too tedious that's hammer mill material um, these here actually undoing those three screws I was able to get that out and unwind it but I figured the little bit of copper that's in there and I'm only gonna get 28 cents a pound um, or um, you know three dollars a pound and then nine cents a pound for the prepared steel I might as well get 28 cents a pound for all that steel and I wind up pulling off the end caps so we're gonna get 55 cents a pound for this cast you know so I figured we took it apart some we didn't go all the way but this is the copper that I pulled out of the middle and out of the coil I mean it's a little chunk but it, it's uh, that's some tedious stuff um, that's what we got for the transformers ain't much in there I'm gonna weigh this up see where we're at and then I'm gonna work on this extruded here and that drum and uh, then we have a bunch of big uh, AC compressors in here and uh, someone sent me a plasma cutter to review so I'm thinking about setting it up and uh, doing a little review on it and cutting these open we got some big boys over here as well pretty much trying to clear this out get rid of this cart or well, not get rid of it but empty it out it's about time um so we might cut those open still have the rotors cooking off we came across a bunch of aluminum um which were from these fan motors so i didn't want to go ahead and get in there and start opening these up and then them being aluminum uh, we do have a couple copper ones over here that we cut I'll get I'll get the uh, machine here set up we'll pull that out um, if we decide we're gonna cut those things open we're gonna, um, I'm gonna weigh all this stuff up see where we're at and uh, see how far we want to go if we want to actually sell those off or cut them open I'm, I'm thinking I'm getting 25 cents a pound for them so I might just sell them off as is and then get on to some uh, of this other little micro scrapping that I can't sell them off as is. That stuff needs to be processed to a certain point. I don't even know what they would buy some of this stuff as. You know what I'm saying? Like stuff like this. I mean, that's copper and aluminum, but a lot of plastic. Um, I don't know. I have a, a ton of stuff like this. So, and then I got a ton of these, uh, tons of brass. So, we'll see. We're gonna weigh this stuff up, see where we're at, and um, go from there. Man, this shit is tough. You see what's happening there? So this was the top, obviously. That was the bottom. And water must have always been laying down in there. 
because she corroded and don't want to give up the goose. Big old piece of extruded. This thing was actually a uh, uh, a heat lamp. Alright, so we had a little technical issue with that last little bit of video and a couple clips. Um, I either deleted them or lost and one clip. I thought I was recording, but I just pushed the button and it was actually just a, a photo, uh, which happens, um, you know, quite often actually. But what happened in that last little section, the GoPro, and this has happened a couple times before, it just stops recording. It's not hot. It didn't shut itself off. Usually when it gets hot, it'll literally just power itself down. Um, it's been doing this weird thing lately where uh, it'll be recording and then uh, the battery can be full and it just stops recording. It doesn't shut off. It just stops recording and just goes back to like the main menu. I'm not sure what's happening there, why it's doing it. Could be the fact that um, both of my GoPros I've literally got tape on the side because i destroyed the button and it's like exposed in there um this one's this is the nine that's a ten this one's even worse this one not only has the button but inside there that thing moves around it's like if you push it it's just wiggling around i i don't know if there's a warranty or um i, I know gopro doesn't repair these things but i don't know if i can get these refurbished somewhere this one's just missing also i broke the uh um the whole door so i keep uh gorilla tape on the side to keep moisture and dust out of them but um they've definitely been through some stuff you know dropped them multiple times um and just you know working the crap out of them for the past three years I got that one, I think, three years ago. And that one I got, like, you know, within a year. Uh, so I, I've used the crap out of them. Um, I'm open to any suggestions for upgrades. Uh, I want to get, like, a hand cam so when I'm um, shooting, uh, talking, whatever, I can use not the GoPro, maybe something better, a better quality, or whatever. Whatever the, I don't know, any suggestions. Or I'll just go back to using the, the iPhone. Um, but the iPhone is like not smooth. It's really jittery. I don't know if there's a setting I can mess with it, but uh, yeah, we're having some issues with the with the cameras. But uh, um, I'm just gonna have to pay attention and make sure that I see the red light flashing because um, it literally will shut itself off. I haven't had that issue with this one, I don't think. But this one, it's been doing it a lot lately. Even with a fresh battery, not hot. It, it just stops recording, which is very frustrating when you're trying to, you know, pump out some content. Uh, anyway, um, I got, before I get into the, the ticket here, um, I got a ton of videos that the editor has already edited. I just need to review them and um, upload them. That's what I'm doing here. I'm actually editing this video that you're watching now, right now, and having two machines is really a game changer because, you know, I don't always have the time to sit here and edit the videos. I usually try to take one day a week or two days a week to just take the whole day and do like YouTube stuff, you know, catch up on everything. Um, and before just having one machine, when you start rendering back, you want to leave the machine alone because it takes a lot of power to do that. Uh, you know, because I'm running the 4K um, video stuff. And you really couldn't do anything. I, or at least I couldn't do anything 
um, beyond other than maybe answer some questions or whatever. But now I could be rendering. Then I can just go right over here and edit like I'm doing now. I could be downloading or uploading to YouTube and rendering a new video. So it's, it's, and when the editor came last time, they were able to upload four or five videos, which, um, if you know anything about team editing and proxy files, you know, cause they were, they edited it remotely. Uh, it takes a while to upload it into the cloud or wherever it goes. This thing will run for hours. And before it used to do this on my machine here. And one time, like they came and uh, did like five videos. It literally rendered for days. You know, I had to make sure the computer was on and keep refreshing things. And it was just a nightmare. And, and the fans were running nonstop. And uh, anyway, this is just a, a game changer over here. But um, on that last video, on, on this one here that you, wa you just watched, um, I had some issues with the cameras and, and I think I deleted some, some actual footage, but, uh, anyway, we got a lot of stuff coming up here, but, uh, on that, uh, on the scrap that I loaded in that truck, uh, we had 596 pounds of old sheet. I got uh, 53 cents a pound, $315 and, uh, 88 cents. And we had uh, electric motors, uh, 567, 28 cents a pound, uh, $158.76. Now, some of the motors I probably could have processed, but a lot of that stuff was like really small, really tedious, probably needed a hammer mill way too small for my um, current setup with the stator wrecker. And I'm looking to just clear out, um, I'm trying to, I know I'm already into the first of the year or the first month of the year. I'm still I'm trying to clear out all the bullshit in the shop that's been sitting here. And those electric motors have been sitting here. We did take apart a lot of those starters that were in the corner. Um, I took one apart. There was a lot of little copper in there, but that man, that's some micro scrap. And I literally just picked up two more of those starters yesterday. Um, and I'll do a video on them so you can see in real time what was actually in them and why I decided just to sell them off. Well, we broke them down a little bit, but we, we did sell them off. The sealed units, I didn't want to deal with the uh, oil that was involved with them. And uh, I was just tired of looking at them, so they kind of got loaded on the trailer. 528 pounds, 25 cent a pound, uh, $132. Irony aluminum, we had uh, 109 pounds, 15 cent a pound. That was those... Um, um, main, mainly aluminum transformers and then some uh, automotive scrap that had a lot of steel. Um, you know, 1635, not a lot there. The copper chops, I kind of got screwed on them. Um, I only got a dollar a pound for them because I messed up when I was running that sluice out there, washing that down. I, uh, I was thinking to myself, oh man, I need to go find my magnets and I never did. So when I brought it down to Miami, you know, the guy looked at it and was like, well, you know, we, first of all, he was like, you know, we haven't bought copper chops in years from anybody, you know, and it was only a little bit. And when they would sell them in the past, they have to sell a thousand pounds at a time. So they'd have to hold on to that shit for a while. He really didn't even want to take it. Uh, but he walked over and dropped a magnet down in that bucket and it pulled out a ton of steel because a lot of that stuff was swept up off the floor. Um, there's the chop saw shavings. And then um, I don't even know, man, but he, I was even shocked about um, how much he pulled off. And I don't know if there was steel in the bottom of that bucket that I cooked it in the kiln with, but there was a ton of steel on his magnet when he just raked it across the top of it. And he didn't even want to take it. Um, I was like, well, what do you give me for it? He goes, I don't know. I'll think about it. I thought it was going to be more than a dollar a pound. Um, I probably, if I would have known it was going to be a dollar a pound, I probably would have taken it back and, uh, washed it again and messed with it. And maybe, um, I know that the guy that sent me that bar was saying I should send him some copper. Um, but I didn't see that message until after this happened. 
Otherwise, I would have brought it back and let him um, let him play with it because, uh, you know, I, I was just done with it at that point. So I was like, whatever. Uh, I thought I would have got a little more than that. I'm kind of, um, you know, $91 for 91 pounds of, of copper. But he, he didn't know the percentage, you know, how much steel was really in it. So, like I said, he didn't even want it. So, um, the fact that he took it at all, whatever. I got it out of my shop. That's what I'm just trying to do now is just get everything out of my shop. Uh, yellow brass, 13 pounds. It was basically that one big thing. Uh, 215 a pound. 27.95. Then we had uh, cast aluminum, 371 pounds. 55 cent a pound. Uh, 204 pounds and 5 cents. Clean 6063. We had 247 pounds. Now, I had a bunch of round stuff in there that I normally sell as cast aluminum that the dude told me to throw in there that I wasn't expecting to get um, at extruded aluminum price. Normally, I would throw that stuff with the cast aluminum. I don't know why he told me to do that, but I don't even think he was right. Uh, but he told me to do it, so I did it. Uh, $172.90. Then we had the uh, number two wire. There was just some transformer clippings, 24, or 24 pounds, 92 cents a pound. Um, 2208. Copper transformer. So I had a bunch of little tiny um, transformers that had plastic and they i mean they were small stuff it looked like they were i don't even know where they came from it looks like they came off of electronic boards i thought i would get more than an electric motor price for them i kind of just brought them down there to see there was only uh like a half a bucket 63 pounds i got 28 cents a pound 1764 that would have been some serious micro scrapping um if i would have known that i wasn't going to get more than an electric motor price i probably would have tried to process them a little bit but they were tiny little things uh bare bright copper just a couple little nuggets i found laying around um and that i cut i think that was what i cut the things off of 11 pounds 322 a pound 35 42 clean lead a bunch of fishing weights 42 pounds 55 cent a pound 23 10 Number two copper, uh, that was pretty much most of that transformer stuff. 147 pounds, 302 a pound, $443.94 for a total of $1,661. All of that stuff there was, I think pretty much most of that stuff there was free. I don't think I paid for those lights. I got a customer now that's just having me come get them. That I used to buy them from in the past. Now they're just like come get them. Um, which is good. Because I think I mentioned in a, in a previous video. That um, I'm not going to be buying them lights no more. It's just not worth it. Especially traveling around. Um, because. Pretty much now you're always getting. Either double aluminums. Or one aluminum one copper. And it's just the. It's just not. It's just not there anymore. Because I can't be. Buying them like I used to. And then hardly any of the transformers are double copper. And what I'm coming into now is because they've been doing the LED things for five or six years now. Um, and then in the beginning, they were changing them out to them corn cobs, either bypassing the ballast or some people will remove them. So some of those light fixtures, there's no transformer in. So it, it really isn't worth... Um, you know paying for them so anyway if you've come this far thanks for watching stay tuned i am uh blowing out some videos for you guys right now
I'll tell you where we're going, right to the scrap yard. I'll tell you, this kiln does a really good job at um, cooking this stuff. This stuff turns to like a powder. This was like either plastic or, wow, you know it's crazy? I wonder if it's a screwdriver or this thing. It's magnetic. But all this stuff, which was like a plastic, is now just nothing it literally just crumbles apart it almost looks like it looks like cotton or something anyway look at this this thing just it's literally just falling apart i pulled it out and um It just came right out, which is crazy. But the only problem is, um, I really want to weigh some of this stuff, get two of them that are identical, or even just cut the copper, pull it out with the stator wrecker, weigh it with my high accuracy scale, cook it, and then see how much lighter that copper gets. I mean, that's a nice little chunk right there. Um... I wonder if we can get this thing hot enough to melt this aluminum. It didn't touch this aluminum. That stuff was in there. Now, this one here. Oh, see, it's coming right out now. This one was tough. This stuff did not. It still doesn't want to come out. Let's see if we can get it with some pliers. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I was going to send this as, as prepared steel the other day. I was like, you know what? I'm not sending that little bit of copper. Nice little chunk. And we got that big boy down in there. So, I think I got a couple more of these around here I'm going to play with. And I'm supposed to go pick up some big generators. So, we'll see.